Hello and welcome. This is part two of our IPsec VPN demo. Configuring a VPN between a WR44 router as a VPN responder and a WR31 router as a VPN initiator. In part one we have already configured the WR44 that's running on this IP address here as its WAN interface and we configured the LAN side network this network here 192.168.100.0/24 at the end of today's demo we'll have a working VPN and we'll have the topology shown at the bottom we'll have the encryption domain on the left we'll have a working VPN in the middle between the two routers and we'll have the encryption domain on the right and we'll be able to route traffic from the subnet on the right to the subnet on the left and we'll also be able to route from the subnet on the left to the subnet on the right. This is commonly known as a LAN to LAN IPsec VPN. Let's quickly jump onto the WR44 we configured in part 1 and review the configuration. For the LAN side interface, we configured a IP address on the Ethernet 1 interface with a 24-bit mask. We configured a time server, um, which is in a different menu, but I'll show you that in a second. Um, we configured IKE, which is phase 1 for the IPsec VPN, and anything that is checked here is going to be allowed for the negotiations. So we're allowing AES only but we're allowing 128-bit, 192-bit and 256-bit encryption and we're allowing SHA-256 only and modular groups between group 2 and 14 so as long as the initiator uses one of the AES encryption protocols it must use SHA-256 because that's the only one we've got selected and it can use any modular group at phase 1 between group 2 and group 14 then as long as that matches phase 1 will be successful at phase 2 for the IPsec VPN we set an asterisk to allow any remote IP address to connect we set the local LAN as the the local encryption domain the remote LAN is the remote encryption domain behind the WR31 we set up pre-shared key authentication for phase 2. The ID that this router is going to use is its public IP address and the ID that the WR31 is going to use is WR31-UK1. We set up this tunnel to use AES256 encryption, SHA-256 authentication and at phase 2 we specified that Diffie-Hellman Group 5 must be used. We set the lifetime of the Phase 2 Security Association to be 4 hours. The pre-shared key was configured in the user table at user 10 in here and we also set up our own time server. So that's everything that was done on the WR44 responder. This here is the router that we're going to be configuring today. The WR31 router is connected to the O2 network and its WAN interface PPP1 is receiving a dynamic private IP address. I've done a little bit of configuration on this router already so it is connected to the mobile network and I've configured the Ethernet 0 interface with this network over here 192.168.101.1 with a 24-bit mask. I've also configured this router with the same SNTP server as we used on the WR44. I'll quickly show you that in the configuration. So in the interfaces Ethernet 0 is configured with the 101 network. 
I've also configured another IP address on this router on Ethernet 2 192.168.0.31 and that's the IP address I'm using to connect to this router for configuration purposes only. This has nothing to do with the VPN configuration. So if you're accessing this router via its network that's going to be used as part of the VPN configuration, you don't need to worry about doing this. So if we have a look at the routing table, we can see here Ethernet 0 is up on the 101 network which we'll be using as part of the VPN configuration and PPP1 that's the IP address assigned by the mobile network. This here is the interface and IP address that I'm going to be using for connecting to this router for configuration and management. Let's move on now and start with the configuration of the WR31. We'll go into networks, VPN, IPsec and we're going to configure phase 1 into IKE0 and we have to select an encryption method that matches one of the allowed encryption methods on the VPN responder. So we're going to use AES256. The only one that was enabled on the WR44 for authentication was SHA-256 and this VPN is going to be an aggressive mode VPN because the WR31 is obtaining a private dynamic IP address we can't use main mode. The mod P group, the modular group at phase 1 on the responder was set to allow between groups 2 and 14 we're going to use 5. The lifetime for phase 1, 8 hours, is the same as what would set on the WR44. We'll apply that and move on to phase 2, which is in IPsec 0. Description, we'll give it a friendly name, VPN to HQ router. The IP address or host name of the remote unit is 826887.5, so that's the public IP address of the responder router. The local LAN is the local encryption domain on this side, 192.168.101.0 with a 24-bit mask. The remote LAN is the encryption domain on the HQ router which is 100 with a 24-bit mask. We're going to use pre-shared keys for security and authentication. Um, the hour ID that we're going to send from this router is WR31-UK1 and the remote ID 8268.87.5 and these are simply the, the values that were set on the other router but the opposite way around. So these are transposed. The encryption we're going to use has to match. There's no option here to negotiate a range. It has to be exactly the same as what was configured on the other side for phase 2. So AES256, SHA2 and Diffie-Hellman group at phase 2 is going to be group 5. This next section here controls how the tunnel is activated. On demand means that the tunnel will only be activated if there is a packet that needs to be routed from this local encryption domain on the WR31 over to the remote encryption domain over on the WR44. Um, that's good for saving on data if you've got a data plan that has a, a low amount of data included however most people want the VPN to be up all the time and for traffic to be initiated at any time from behind the remote router over to the HQ network and also to be able to route at any time from the HQ network over to the network behind the remote router so typically whenever a route to the destination is available is the option that should be chosen if the tunnel is down and a packet is ready to be sent, 
this needs to be set to bring the tunnel up. So on the initiator, we need this option and this option, which is different from what you would see on the responder router. The lifetime for the phase two security association is going to be four hours before a renegotiation of the keys takes place. Let's apply that and set up the pre-shared key. We'll go into security, users, again we're going to use user 10 because by default the access level is low. The username is the same as the ID that the other router is using. The password I have already set up in notepad so I'll just copy that and paste it and confirm it and again set the access level to none because this is the access level for this username for management purposes on this router so as it's a pre-shared key no management is required we now need to activate IPsec and ideally the firewall on the WAN interface so we come into interfaces advanced PPP1 which is the WAN side interface on this router we're going to change the NAT type to IP address and port which is the equivalent of Cisco's overload we're going to enable IPsec and we're going to enable the firewall as well this router has exactly the same set of firewall rules on it as the WR44 so we know there's no restrictions for outbound traffic or VPN building and creation so that looks good everything is done but if you come into the event log you'll see here that the VPN is not being initiated from this router if we click on refresh still no attempts to build the VPN now that's because the PPP connection needs to be disconnected and reconnected before uh, the VPN will be initiated so we come in here um, interfaces advanced PPP 1 come on to the drop link option and in a moment that will come back up again it only takes a second or two and we can see now that the the PPP interface is back up if we come over here to the event log we see PPP1 is up and then we see the VPN start to initiate it goes through some negotiations and the next line here eroot0 VPN peer um, to the peer IP address of the other router um, and that means that the VPN has been successfully negotiated now we can test this just to prove everything is working correctly first of all let's have a look at the routing table on this router and we're going to use this IP address as the source address to send pings over the VPN tunnel and that, is, that IP address is on interface Ethernet 0 so we're going to do ping 192.168.100.1 which is the IP address of the LAN interface on the other router but we need to make sure that the source address of that packet has the IP address of Ethernet 0 so we use the switch minus E0 and we're going to send three pings hit execute and that's good all three pings sent with replies received and we can see that there's um, a little bit of latency there and that's because the packet is going over the mobile network we can do exactly the same on the WR44 responder router we can do ping 192.168.101.1 um, the LAN side subnet was on Ethernet 1 on this router and we're going to send three pings and again all three pings successfully responded to back onto the WR31 we'll have a look at the 
VPN status. So connections, VPN, IPsec. Let's have a look at the phase one essays. So over here we can see that there is a, a valid phase one essay and it has a time left which is the TTL before phase one is renegotiated. IPsec tunnel zero which is the phase two essay and in here you can see that the the local network is defined here and the remote network is defined here and again we can see the TTL or the time left until renegotiation at phase two. Finally let's come over to security firewall and we'll just have a look and we can see that there's some traffic on the allow all outbound and return traffic back in um, and there's some ESP traffic allowed and here we've got traffic on the VPN with three hits which is the uh, the three pings that were sent. That's all looking good. Finally we save the configuration, click the save button, wait for that to complete and once it says the config has been saved successfully everything is good, the VPN's up and now you can route traffic end to end from this side over to this side and from this side over to this side via the secure VPN that is now created between these two routers. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching.